Hello and welcome to Joyride with your hosts, the metaphysical moms, Tiffany and Carrie. Joyride takes you on a spin through all things spiritual and soulful, including holistic healing, energy work, and personal development. Now, here are your hosts, Tiffany and Carrie. It'll go red. Yes. Hi, guys. I think we're live on Facebook. I did it live. Yes, I wrote last night that we may be live. We can get it all figured out. <laughs> Yeah, so hi, hi we're the Metaphysical everybody. Moms, Tiffany. And I'm Carrie. And we are really actually glad to be back doing right. this as a live. We've done recorded for a while because we just kind of go with the flow. We kind of go with organically what's going on that day and it just not has, has not felt like live shows have been the thing. We've been setting up studios and life is going on. And I want to say that when we set up studios, I'm dragging, we drag stuff around my house. I mean, it, my house is so just cords well, everywhere right now. Every little nook and cranny has been fun to explore. So we are so thankful that you are hopefully gonna join us here today on Facebook or later on YouTube. Welcome to the Joy Tribe family. If you are new to us, uh, all our videos are on YouTube and um, we just like to take a spin around the spiritual block and have these weekly conversations about all things metaphysical, paranormal, uh, healing, whatever. UFOs, that's today's topic. But we love to try to bring the higher, oh, what's the word, like the higher perspective and how we can apply it to our everyday life, which is, which is sometimes not so easy. But I think when um, we gain these tools and we start to apply them, it can get really fun. It can get fun. And it, and it sheds a different type of understanding um so we're going to introduce our friend who's sitting here very patiently yes <laughs> this, is, this is our new friend todd hosman um yes. who's, he lives here in houston so usually we're skyping people in from all over the world but today todd drove himself here to curry's house so. okay. do it live welcome todd <laughs> thank you so todd is so we have had james gillilin from the e seti mm -hmm. ranch we have had ashley from the ranch on actually ashley was on a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. and um and i've always wanted to go out to the ranch but it has just hasn't happened yet and but you are an ambassador from the ranch yes yeah? i've been gosh first year i went t three times the first year second year i think i went twice and the third year i went once so i, I didn't was... know you've been that many times oh yeah oh yeah i'd love to go more but uh you know it's kind of far so we're going to talk to Todd today to introduce you guys to him because he's got a really interesting kind of backstory and his journey from mm -hmm. corporate to totally stepping out and coming out now as his spiritual self and fully embodying that and he's got like really documentation and videos of some of the cool experiences that you've had that we're going to share today but I, I want to I want to start out though um, by saying that when he knocked on my door and I opened the door. It was like, oh my gosh, there you are. I heard it the first time I spoke with you. Yep. And you cleared our house, or you helped clear us, not our house, but us. Your aura, yeah. You can clear the house, you can clear your work field, you can clear your space, where you work, where you live, you know. Yeah, you can use sage, presents. you can use sage, or yes. Or chocolate. You don't enter someone's house in my, my, my imagination without gifts. Flowers Here. didn't seem appropriate, so I got chocolate and sage, or this isn't sage, this is... It's a, it's a, or Palo a, Santo. You Palo can use, Santo wood to Palo cleanse. Santo wood. You can use either, either thing you want to clear your space. Good um, so I cleared their auric fields. We did a little quick meditation. We did the clearing prayer that James developed, the healing negative influences. And, uh, so Madeline, we are going to tell you all about the ranch and East Eddy and what that is. And we're going to tell you all about James and all of the energy work and experiences that James, uh, that Todd has been having. Um, did I call you James? It's, I think you that's did fine. James. I think that's a compliment, Todd. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a compliment. Oh, thank James you so much. runs yes, the East Eddie Ranch, yes, where James Todd the has had major experiences and is an ambassador of. So we are going to talk about that. But I want to start first with what you did with us. Yeah, so the prayer. This okay. is a the healing clearing. negative influences clearing. Um, Todd brought us these little cards that have it written out, and as you memorize it, it's something that you can embody and mm -hmm apply to anything that's going on that feels disruptive to you whatever is going on and so I'll let you take it away so if you want to just be with us it's kind of a little minute quick mini meditation with intention so you can use it <clears throat> however you feel appropriate for you it works um, the more you use it the better it's it, the more powerful it is for you the the more you're gonna bring through your own 
gifts, ascended self, your own connections with your star family. And I started out doing it in the morning, uh, three times a day, in the morning, during lunch, and then at night before I went to bed. And you have different, op, uh, different. Uh, it, it, it's like a generic or fix-all tool, I guess, mm -hmm. spiritual tool. Yeah. So you can develop it and use it however you want. You can't, the best part about anything about ESETI or what you learn, you can't do it, you can't screw it up and you can't do it the wrong way. So as long as it's used for positive things, of course. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, and you guys will link it on the website later. Yeah, yeah it's a link to, to how you can, but right now just, just see if you want to close your eyes and share with us and see how you can apply this in your own life. So take a few, few deep breaths, relax, center into yourself. You can call in source energy, God, you can call in your guides, you can call in anyone that you feel is gonna give you protection. And you imagine a golden white light surrounding you, filling you, and surrounding you with protection. And we welcome all entities in love and light. We speak to you all from the Lord God, Goddess of our being, telling you all that you're healed and forgiven, lifted and enlightened, healed and forgiven, lifted and enlightened, filled and surrounded with the divine Christ light and the divine Christ love. And we ask the beautiful many to escort you all to your perfect place. Go in peace. And so it is. And so it is. So it is. That's the short form. And you can add on things at the end if you'd like to. I, I did a special one today for Tiffany and Carrie. They didn't know I was going to do it. So I threw in a little extra stuff. And really, it doesn't matter. It's non-denominational. You don't have to say Jesus. You can say Mary. You can say Buddha. You can say Baba G. You can say anyone. Any religion. It works with all of them because... Truly, all the Ascended Masters work together outside of, of the division within religion on the planet that we've all been brought up to believe. Okay. Well, so I have a few questions about this before you go too far. No, no, I, I was just going to say that Ashley, um, on the show last week, she was saying that she helped people cross after the Twin Towers came down. Mm -hmm. And she said it was interesting because they would go up like the, sort of the like gold escalator. They went up, and the face... The being at the top of the of the escalator, the face would change to Jesus, Buddha, to the different, and it was right. whatever fit your belief because it's all part of source. It's all part of part of God. We are all part of God. Mm -hmm. Yay! So okay, so in this healing negative influences meditation, prayer, whatever you want to call it, that James. It's a tool. Tool. Yeah. So we welcome all entities in love and light. So when you think of we. Because when I do tapping, we have to we have to kind of bring everything in and include it with love. So that's is that what that is? It's kind of the gist of it. So even if it's a negative thing or somebody's like upsetting you, your enemy, we welcome it all. Yeah, the negative, the negative aspect cannot handle love. It really can't handle feminine energy. That really freaks it out. So the more love you can fill yourself with, the more. I mean, I'll I'll go into my story with that I told you earlier about my experience with this. But the more you can stay in your heart and just be happy it doesn't know how to handle laughter either so if you laugh at them they really squirm but yeah it's bringing in all the positive entities because they have such a you know we have love and idea of it here on the mm -hmm. planet but mm -hmm. you know we share between each other but their amount of love i mean i know you all felt it before when it really comes in you can feel how powerful it is Imagine that to a negative entity that's just like all. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I don't want to see the light. And so you're yeah. including it. You're including it. the positive and the negative. We welcome you all in love and light, and we speak to you from. All, we speak to you all from the Lord God of our being, telling you all that you are healed and forgiven, lifted and enlightened. You you are healed, forgiven, lifted, and enlightened. So we're literally saying that to whatever is bothering us, or our our own, our own self. We're literally telling ourselves we're lifted, enlightened, and loved, and forgiven. Yeah, and you're letting. More importantly, you're letting that negative thing drawn to you like a moth to a flame to help it heal itself and help it move on because it's stuck. A negative entity is really a thought form or an energy, anything that's just there. They need help. Yeah. It, if we fight them and think they're terrible and just want to throw anger at them, it's going to feed them. You're feeding it. They're feeding the, the, the what is it, the two wolves, the parable? Yeah. You're feeding the, the, dark, the dark wolf. wolf. Right. So if you bring in the love and light, it goes, it has an option now. It can resist you. But the great thing about this healing prayer is once you're healed and forgiven, lifted and enlightened, you can imagine your archangels coming in or your guides or whoever you work with or even your higher self. The aspect of you could be doing it. 
Imagine all, all left, right, forwards, front, behind, above and below, stuff coming in, you know, and going, hey, let's go. And it's gone. It's the out. bouncers. The bouncing yeah, them the out spiritual bouncers, yeah. Well, and then we <laughs> ask the beautiful many to escort you all to your perfect place. Go in peace. Yeah. So we're not kicking it to the curve. We're saying you are loved. You you are no, not. You're you invited to go to your perfect place. and yeah. You're handling it with love, not with anger, not with. Whatever and that's the that's where the is. miracles happen, I think. Well, when it's you transmutation. It yes. I mean, it's you're transmuting, and ultimately, I think that's what we want to do with everything. Be, um, yeah, that's so cool. Thank and you the, for sharing that. Yeah, and the best part is it's not allowed to jump into somebody else because they're taken back to source and either recycled yes. or given another chance. You know, let them repent, whatever you want, know, whatever word that's whatever the, right the word. word, whatever happens. It gives them an option the... to stop doing what they've been doing or continue. If they want to continue, that's fine. But they're not going to do it not to you or to anyone else that you, you can use it for yourself, for your family, for anyone. So thank you, Carrie, by the way. Carrie so let's say hi, because this is, um, yeah, we're getting a few friends. We didn't really announce it. We were going live at a specific time today. So thank you guys for joining us. We've got Beth and Sue, Carrie, shiny Carrie, uh, and the Michelle, shiny show? Madeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, our Gary. Madeline is saying Bacon hi, Todd, and Sue is saying East City is on your bucket list. Well, good. You're getting a little sneak peek here today. I'm, my and my we'll intention you know, is to bring East City. They couldn't get to East City. I'm like, I'll bring East City to you. Yes. You still need to go. I'm just sharing from the first person aspect of my experiences. The cool thing about it, if Carrie goes and if Tiffany goes, they're going to get completely different experiences but it's going to be perfect for them if that makes sense that's the coolest part about you said yeah. it's not one thing it's not cookie cutter it's oh. whatever you're whatever you allow in put it that way you can go like this but i re i recommend just going like this and go hey give me hit me with your best shot well that i'm, I'm gonna look at you through there I, that's what i love um the idea that the vibrations are so high Yes. And, and they say that after a couple of days, your stuff starts to bubble up to be cleared, right? Yes, it, yes. So, so can you talk about that? Did you oh experience that? Oh my gosh, that? yes. I, oh, yeah. Well, can we back up a second and tell what the ranch is? Because somebody may not be that familiar. We've had James Gilliland and Ashley formerly from the ranch on, but it's a physical place mm -hmm. up in the Northwest Coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's in Hood River, Washington, right? Not Oregon. Washington. I know you fly in. To Oregon. You can fly into Seattle or Portland. I fly into yeah. Portland, come down, and then go cross over because the, the river is the boundary between Oregon and Washington. It's in Washington. And, uh, and East SETI stands for Enlightened Contact with Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Yes. East SETI for short. East SETI for and short. you go there to have your own contact, I, your own experience. But it's not just that, though. I mean, that's what I wanted to talk about is that also it's such a vortex in the, and the that you can experience Mary, you can experience Jesus, you can experience Bigfoot, you can experience Yeti. Is is that the same thing, Yeti and Bigfoot? Actually, there's there's Bigfoot, Yeti, Sasquatch. and Sasquatch. There's three different ones. There probably are many more, but there are actually three on this planet. And uh, they bounce, they bounce through. The Yetis are dimensions, normally in right? cold. Oh, they can interdimensionally shift like. Like super fast. No problem. Yeah. One of the stories James always tells at the ranch was Clive Lewis, one of the youngest ones called the Lockie, the adolescent one. He had an experience with uh, Clive. Clive and James are hanging out. They've told the story before. You can find I'll give you the short version. James and Clive are hanging out and having coffee in front of the or the one of the rooms there. The orchard's across. The Lockie comes running up, slides, stops, gets this close and goes <laughs> like that to Clive and just takes off running back through the orchard but when he took when he stopped he, he left a footprint oh i just heard about that yeah he left a footprint so james put the footprint and they gave it to clive and then that's when he came out and started talking about it he's like i can't tell people this they won't he's like well here's the print right there he's like okay so but when he took off the other way when he ran back through the orchard none of the branches moved and he ran right towards where there's a lake and there was no splash so as he was running away he was interdimensionally shifting and he didn't interact with any of the physicality of this third dimension as he was going back out and his poop he was gone and clive was like we are, you know? somebody's channeled Bigfoot before. So I think it's Carrie. Carrie was it? I think it might have been Carrie. Yeah, There's a lot of people that interact with. Yeah. At the at the one of the oh, what's the lady's name? She's in Hawaii. I can't yeah. remember her name. Joan. Joan. Ah, she was there last Fourth of July, and she she deals with she swims with dolphins. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It is Bigfoot. Joan. Yeah. Joan. Yep. 
Okay, so I'll let you get back to your story. And we're all over the place. Go, no, when people go to the ranch, they're going to have their own experience. So yeah, the I'll tell this. Remind me later to tell my the story yeah. about the grocery store. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, so when you go there, there's the Goldilocks, they call it the Goldilocks period, the first three days. The vibration is so high, it's so, you're like almost high. You're, you're so happy and excited and it's just like no place on earth. You've never felt this kind of... So better than Disney World. Oh yeah, yeah. Your favorite roller coaster without the scary parts. And it's very nature. I mean, there's not a lot of infrastructure there. Nope, they're out in the middle. It's a big yep. ranch. There's uh, many, many, many acres. There's cabins. They're going to be start building more, I think. James was talking about. They're going to... But that's on the website. Yeah. So, when you're there the first day, you're just blissed out. You're so excited. You're so happy. You're just like... You feel like you're home. Everybody says it. They said it first before I went there, and I was like, oh, whatever, you know. What do you mean home? But you do. You feel like you're home because it's... The energy so high. The vibration's so high. And after that, you have, they call it the Goldilocks or the, you know, the, the initiation period. After a few days, your stuff starts to come up. So be open to letting go of whatever you've been holding on to, fear, anger, whatever is going to be best for you. Because I guarantee you, three years ago, I'm a completely different person than I was three years ago. I mean, people see me now, they're like, what are you, are you in drugs? Why are you so happy? Why are you like, I... I well, because it's just, not just those experiences, but you've been doing the ongoing meditations oh with gosh. the groups. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of a lot of spiritual work. It all started at Yeseti. Um Wait, wait, how did you know to go out there? I was watching videos. I, well, back back. I, a couple, a couple years ago, I was living in South America teaching English, and uh, I was getting a, a lesson ready for my students, and I came across doing research on the on videos and different things to show them. And I, my hand just moved over and just clicked on a video. And it was uh, spirit science. And it was the secret, or the hidden history of Earth, was what it was. And it featured heavily Thoth, Metatron, the, the guy on the pyramid walls with the human body and the head of a crane. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, I later found out that that's one of my aspects, or one of my guides as well, is, is Thoth, also Metatron. He goes by many different names because he's come back many times. And I watched that video, and I couldn't stop watching it. I watched it uh, all day long. And uh, it started my kind of like tapping me on the shoulder, like, hey, there's something out there. There's something going on. Mm -hmm. And I started watching other videos, and some people I dismissed because I, I didn't feel a connection or a, a fit with the vibration for that person. So I started paying attention to who was interviewing who. And it came across James after you know many trials and errors. And the whole spider web of everybody connected to everybody else. And James said something profound. It hit me like a lightning bolt. He said, look, number one, don't follow me because you'll be off of your path. Right. Number two, come here and have your own experience. But once you have your own experience, no one can take it away from you. And all I wanted to do, it's so funny to say this now. All I wanted to do is see a UFO. That's it. I just wanted to see one. I'm like, I know they're there. I feel it. Ben. I've seen, you know, I've, I, but I want to see a ship. But, see, I thought I would see the old Area 51 ships, nuts and bolts. It's not like that. That was way in the past, and the people that don't want disclosure to come out keep talking about that, and they won't go past that point. But these ships are made of energy. They're biological. Some of the ships are alive. Mm -hmm. There's, I've seen different colored ships. I've seen different sizes. Some come close. Some come from far. Some intersect with each other. Some go in and out of each other. I've seen everything. The first, the first night I was there for Skywatch, I saw 25 ships. What? And I was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Well, and there is also an app that will show you, yes, there's a satellite right there. Yes, you know, and they, and they map them. So you guys also check that, don't you? Yeah, they've got many different. They have uh, Heavens Above, Heavens I believe. Above, yeah. And there's other programs that tell you. But the coolest thing is you can feel it. Yeah. Like when well, you when, I, when you see a satellite. There's an airplane and it's an obvious airplane. Do you want to show that clip? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at my. So you have these infrared cameras. I have a. You you, have there's many different kinds. There's this one. I use this one. It's a monocular. It's just got one. It's got infrared setting on it. But the cool thing is this one records yes. video. So. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that is really cool. And it's this for is, hunting. This is the actual camera. Oh, yeah. I see. It's got all the. All the buttons like on the top. Old, okay. little big. Now you can get. The best, obviously, is military-grade night vision. Yeah, but those are, like, 
Seven, I don't have seven thousand yeah. dollars or whatever. There's different levels. James has, uh, I think, first generation and third generation white phosphorus. He had it donated. The it's white phosphorus. Really, really clear. It's. Is every, that what they record with? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the one he uses. He hooks up to his camera. So you recorded this. All this the stuff I have. Watch. Yeah, all the stuff I have, I recorded through that. That's for hunting, but it also works at night, black and white, and during the day, it's color. But it has infrared, which is the important part. You don't need infrared to see the shifts, but you need infrared to see... Have some light source. Orbs. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So this is just a basically, when you look up, you see anytime people are like, oh, oh it's a ship. Look at the UFO. <gasps> I mean, obviously so that looks like an airplane, but sometimes you can't always see the form. Right, so that's obviously and then, an but you, The main difference is you're going to see strobes. Right. Always you're going to see strobes or lights. Um, so that's is, just your airplane for reference. Yeah. Got it. This is one of the ships, one of the energy ships phasing in and out. Thank you for sharing all these. You're I welcome. Know. This is, this is the first time this has been sh shared like this. And I don't have a tripod. This is just me shaky, shaky. So yeah, it looks like a satellite, right? I mean, so it looks somebody's like got a, a laser star. pointer. It looks like a star <laughs> moving through. But somebody has a laser pointer. Yep, to show where it, it is. Did obviously. you drink coffee? <laughs> yeah, a little, it's not easy to hold that. Plus, but you're so is excited. Is it going in yeah. a steady stream? Oh yeah, it's going. Some of them turn. Some of them stop. Some of them go in reverse. We've seen. And, and somebody uh, has a laser pointer on land. Yep, that to is point it out. Mm -hmm. So this one was phasing well, Look at the out. orbs. Look at the orbs around it. Yep, there you can see orbs coming oh, through. That's there. There was one. That, was, that one's pretty Yeah, see there was two orbs just went by. So that's... No, I've got a better one that has... And so for the orbs... This is a multiple power up here, this one. Let's see what we got here. And the coolest thing is, is you can feel it in your heart chakra. You really yeah. can. I mean, you have a connection. I've asked them to do things. And it blew my mind. Is that one blinking? That yep, one just it's blinking? powering up. It's powering up and going in and out. And I'm having a hard time tracking it because it's, it's see it pulsing. Yeah. Those are the ones Tiffany and I saw. It gets dark yeah. and then it gets there bright. There were three stars. We had one that came over. I think it was, yeah, it was this year or last year. No, it was last year. It powered up 33 times before it phased out. Okay, was this, didn't something just go, oh, no. Hold on. Yeah, it's just pulsing. The, whoever's on that ship is just deciding to pulse and not stay real. There's the oh, see that, see that power. Flip. Yeah, look at well, we we were in the brothels laying there watching stars, and I, I was just drawn to There's this another. huge triangle of stars. The, we're talking about the went, lake. Boom! It's just this huge bright blip, just like, like that. Power up. Because it's powering up for one, but also it's directing its light to you, so you can see it. Look at all the streaks. So. Well, that's somebody with a laser pointer trying to point at it. Yeah, yeah. Sarah it's Kajawa, um, we were we were on the golf course and mm -hmm. we're laying there and all of our heads are in one spot. And I said, you know, I would just love to see, I'd love to see a shooting star. And it was, as soon as she said it, yeah. And and it came that's in. That's the connection. And then that's how we see them. Or I've, I've seen that twice. That's the connection we had the first time I saw. I was just in awe the first trip. I was just like kid in a candy store. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything but just like grin and actually cry and everything. It was beautiful. Yeah. But this, I think it was the second trip I went. My friend was like, hey, ask him to do something. I'm like, what? They're like, just think it. And I'm like, okay. So I asked it to power up and it immediately powered up. The ship that I was, that I was connected with. And then I asked it to, before I'd only seen it do one or two flashes and then it went away. But this, so I really asked and pushed and pushed and I, it powered up four times. As soon as I asked it to, and I'd wait, I waited to make sure it wasn't just like random. And I'd wait a few seconds for it to, you know, just go. And then I go, okay, please power up again. And it would do it on. As soon as, almost, then the fourth one was before I said it, because I think they were playing around with me. Like, yeah, we have to, you, we have telepathic communication. It's a two way source. We just don't realize. Did it ask you to do anything? No. <laughs> so, 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 Stand on one foot and jump in a circle. So does Jane. He did it, he did it. Do you guys know? Where they're from? I mean, those particular ships? James knows exactly because he's had so much 30 years experience doing this out at the ranch. He knows when he feels on a certain, he has connections, he knows where on his body mm -hmm. it comes from, where he has the feeling. But he also, they tell him a time. He's been so dead on with time. He's like, yep, they told me at 10.05 they're going to come out of the east and be right there. And every time he's had groups up there and shared it with them, like clockwork, boom, exactly on time. So I, I, the connection to me, I didn't feel anything at that point. Um, I really uh, felt my connection with uh, my particular star family, with a, a certain part of the ranch that's called the uh, medicine, Galactic Medicine. Oh, so, uh, I've heard things But about you, that. certain people, they know, like, it seems like 
there's a bunch of Arcturian ships that'll come through, Andromedan ships, Pleiadian ships. They, they kind of come in groups. Mm -hmm. Like the last time I was at the ranch, it was almost all Andromedan. It was so amazing. So and they they're look all different the same, colors. They, just... they all look like the energy, because mm -hmm. we can't physically see, our brains can't comprehend at this point. And we're not going to see the color, obviously, on a not on, yeah. vision like that, but you can see the color when you're there. You can see the color there, and sometimes they'll go through the spectrum. They'll change no. colors. Yeah, just to... Just to Show off. Maybe. <laughs> no, I, you know what I wonder... But they'll go through pink, green, yellow, just different colors. Can you tell them, and maybe this is what James does, can you say, okay, if it's this, can I feel it on this side or that side? Like, could you designate where the info comes in, I wonder? I think that's more of a personal connection. If you have a lineage with that particular star family, you're going to feel it, mm -hmm. period. You're just going to feel it. It may not be localized. That's I, I talk about it a lot, but in the backyard. I mean, that's, that's it's like, I get it. And, and I started to cry, and it's like, pew, in the big pop power up in Houston. Houston, I mean, we have the light. Oh, I've seen them here, too. I mean, Houston. I haven't done the Skywatch. We haven't done the Skywatch yet. But we're going, we're going to. to. Yeah, if you're in Houston, We're going to do tuned, Skywatches we'll in Houston. We need, to find a, we need to find a place. Because we've, we've laid there and just, poof, they just power up yep. for you and blink at you. And then you're like, oh, that just happened. Did you see Did it? Did you see that? Did, Did you, you see that? And Tip's great. My contacts dry out. I'm just <sighs> like, come on, you know, just hold my eyes open. But Tip, Tip is great at seeing them. Like she's like, oh yeah, nah, yeah, it's see, a, that's satellite. a satellite or an yeah, and she'll, but this was just a boof out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll sit there. Sometimes they'll sit there and you'll think it's a star, but wait, that constellation's wrong. That's not. And then as soon as you, and then it's gone. You're just like, oh my gosh, did that just happen? Yes, it did. And you but have footage of them coming in and out of Mount Adam. Not in and out. Not no, that's just the door. door. Well, it could be. I mean, but that's the decoy door, right? No, no, no. Okay, this, so James was saying recently that there's the door that, what's his name, yep. George Nori found? On the top left, yeah, that was Last a decoy, year, yeah, it was a, was a decoy. I have a video door. of that too, actually I have a video Really, of should we be talking about the decoy door? It doesn't matter, yeah, it's so not. So this is Mount Adams, which is in the distance from the ranch. Huge. It's yeah. right next to, yeah, 13 miles away, I believe. And so, so there's often a lot of sightings. Is there, so tell us, is there some... There's, there's doors, there's doors, there's, it's a stargate. There's, there's the multiple portal. parts of the mountain that open up and ships, James has, they have footage of, I think it was either Peter Maxwell Slattery or James, they have footage of a ship coming out, of actually out of one of the doors in slow motion. They play it regularly and they play it in slow motion. Was that last year? Oh no, like it was a long, of July last year? long time ago, I think. Okay. I'm not so sure when, but I have, these are, the these are portals, there's three main ones that, that uh, light up. This is one of the lower ones. See, there's certain shirt with a laser down the tree lines. And, and these are these are way too bright to be like a human like light. They've driven at that level. You can get a car in there, but how are you going to shine a light through forest? But either way, there's no way you have the candle power or, or power. That's it's it, impossible right to be that bright from that far away. But my thing is, does anyone ever go up on the mountain and check it out? Oh yeah, people camp out all the time. And Somebody did like a GoPro team or something went up there. Yes, they did, and they never, that. they haven't to this day for, that I'm aware of given the footage to James, because I Why? guarantee you they caught something and they're not ready to share it yet. But it's not somebody back there shining a light no, back. It's, no, it's no way that they so can do see, that. I'm skeptical. I so haven't this, had this experience. Yeah, so this is she a is low. Skeptical. This is a very low part, and there's other portals up higher on the mountain where it's just lava. Uh, you know, like a. Not lava, but uh, stone, rock, snow, ice. You can even get a, snow a snowmobile up there. You have to hike and carry the equipment up there, and it's just there's just no way. Because they, uh, someone actually went out there with a really high light. They went on the mountain and flashed it, and they could barely see it at all. Everything would be a dot. So yeah. is this pitch black? And, and I've also seen in that one area right there, they've also turned on a light at night and allowed the people see the higher one at the yeah. top. Yeah, that's, that's the other door one. at the very top. They're circling it right now. Somebody's inside the mountain with the flip the light on. They're like, turn it off, turn yeah. it off. <laughs> so that's, oh, look, there's a, oh, that's my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> there's another one. That's the mouse. And I can control it. It looks like an airplane. <laughs> so the lower one down here, it's actually right behind Tiffany. Okay. So oh God, can you see it? Yeah. Right there. Um, and then the one at the top. And then there's one over on the right side. There's many. There's many. These are the three main ones. And on the right, there's a cave with a statue of Buddha with the face of a lion different faces around the cave. It's really neat. And, and that's created? the, that's the, I don't, it was created by somebody. I don't think it was carved by humans, but that's the cave that, or the portal or entrance that the ship came out of that they have footage of. So these are the other three parts that open up. But the interesting thing is about the bottom portal, 
we were out at Skywatch one night. It was overcast, not a lot going on. They can come through the clouds sometimes and just power up the whole sky, and you can see them. They did it a few times. And the interesting thing was we it was out there with a handful of people, and we were able to see. It's like they turned on a light, or it got real murky and fuzzy and blurry, and the whole part, one quarter of the mountain just kind of, we couldn't see it, and then all of a sudden it came in clear, and they were allowing us to see through into a different dimension. There was a city that appeared right there on the quarter left-hand side of the mountain. I, I saw a pyramid, a big gigantic pyramid, not like in Egypt. It had the capstone, smooth walls of granite, a gold pyramid or gold capstone, mm -hmm. and it was emanating energy. I didn't see the city. I saw the pyramid. Other people that were with me, they saw the city. Mm -hmm. They said, there's a city right there. And it stayed visible for us for about maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And then it just kind of slowly faded back out. But they allowed us, I believe they allowed us to see into a different dimension. I mean, we see that all the time in TV and entertainment where somebody will whoosh and there's a porthole into another dimension, you know, all the yep. Doctor Strange or whatever it is. And, um, Oh yeah, Doctor Strange, totally. Yeah, he with his sling ring, and then you just jump into another, portal. Yeah, jump into another dimension. So to actually, we may be able to do that. I mean, I think we'll here. probably be able to do that at some point. Okay, so there's like we won't need a telephone. Forget internet telephones. We'll just be like, let's go over here, whoosh, jump through, and you're in another dimension. So there's lights and and orbs and stuff. But have you? Has there ever been? The orb. Has there ever been a, like a physical contact with? Yes. Have you ever had any Not me. physical contact yet? I'm Not sure you've got to take this in the stages so that you're scared of the skin right off the cat. Yeah, I mean, I've got it. That's a person, by the way, so that's not the orb. Okay, so this is a, a person who's... She's doing a prayer. She's saying she's speaking light language, which is an ancient for her. Yeah, and then there's an orb that comes in above her. Oh, you're good. And I was just filming. I was that's like, a person. That's a, actually, that's oh. a little orb. There's that's a small... Orb. No, I'm sorry. That is the, that is the orb that came in. But it, it floats... Through. Now, if you have color, you can see some of the orbs, that could be an entire galactic civilization in that orb. What? That's how they travel. It could be one being. James, he said they've seen uh, people sitting in the Buddha, cross legs, what? floating in the orbs. But an entire civilization in that they could, orb? Yep. They could call, come together as they space? put their consciousness together oh. and come here to observe or interact. And that thing just floats around her head, doesn't it? It floats right around her head and stays right above her. Was it visible at all to the naked eye? Infrared. But to your eye? You can't see it. You can't the see it. The infrared on the camera next to the... You have to have the infrared settings. So, I mean, I can't imagine what that could... It's right above her. You know, it what a skeptic there. would say that is. Like, what could that possibly be? Well, they say it's dust. They say it's an no, insect. It's just, but that, did that's, you watch a, that's, it? A, that's a bug. Yeah, that's a bug, you guys. A perfectly spherical bug. <laughs> going in different directions. And see the density changes, too. But the last, uh, I don't have the footage with me here, but I have. I actually, we had a ceremony, a special ceremony that the, an Indian elder, uh, Mr. Mahuti. No, he, we're going to see him did. next week. Awesome. This weekend. He's cool. We're going to Sedona this weekend. Oh, that's so going to we'll be so fun. Meeting. I'm yeah. jealous. I'm so jealous. It's all right. We'll but have to do another trip. The, he did a ceremony, and I, had, I filmed it. And while I was doing the ceremony, I saw three golden points of light on the mountain in different places that I haven't seen before. I haven't, showed, I haven't even shown this to James yet because I didn't realize I had it until I looked at my stuff. But... There was three golden lights in a different part of the mountain that I've never seen before. Normally they've got, they got the three, the one mm -hmm. here, one here, and then one over there. But this was like dot, 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 all in a line. And as he was speaking and doing his ceremony, one of them came on, the other one came on, and another one came on. They all got really bright. Wow. So they were bringing through the ancestral energy, the ancestral presence, force, whatever you want to call it, through for that ceremony. And then later we did a drum ceremony. People were playing instruments. People were chanting. They were singing. They were dancing. It was all at nighttime. And I did something I've never done before. I, I didn't think of it. It was my higher self or my guides helping me. But I laid down on the ground, right in the middle of the ceremony, and pointed my camera straight up. And there were orbs everywhere, circling around us, flying around. It was, they were coming so fast I could barely follow them. Like his little ones were shooting through, and I got a few really big ones that were kind of slow. And I said, please slow down so I can film you. Please, so that I got one that cooperated. Come in for me. your close-up? Yeah. And then uh, it was just, it was amazing. So it was really amazing. I was going to say right there that, um, so one day I'd asked about the 
Thank you, Rob. No, thank you, Mr. Rob. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, one day I'd ask my I'd ask my guides why my grandfather, who apparently is always around me, why he didn't know I'd changed my hair. And so two years after that, I've I've, I've said this story. I've told this story before, but two years after that, my family and I are sitting in a restaurant and I got the buzz, I got the ringing in the ear and I looked around and they showed me it was all black within a grid and where everyone sat was a different colored orb. And they said, that's the way they see you, that's the way we see you. And so so if you're in 3D eyes, you see 3D. Right. But if you're not in 3D, then you see orbs. So my grandfather sees me as an orb and he can read the orb. Oh, cool. So when he dropped down into James Van Prague's eyes, he then could see me. I said, oh, wow, your hair is different, you know? And so, and I thought that was really interesting. So we see them as orbs. I mean, this is what I understand. We see them as orbs flying by, but if you were in their same reality, you would see them as they are. I mean, as, you know, whatever they look like, how our brains would interpret that. Right. That sense. You want to hear something really cool about orbs? Yeah. When you get to that level and you join with other groups or star family groups or you come together or you decide to go somewhere as an orb, once you get to the level where you can do that, James has footage too where he's doing a meditation. He's leaving his body, mm -hmm. and he says, he, as he left his body, he said, "Take a picture." He's got some eyes are closed and other eyes are open as he's leaving his body, and he also has a picture of an orb coming right out of his chest. Wow! But when you can achieve that and have the discipline to do that, once you're an orb, you can see 360 degrees. How trippy is that? Like That's your head's like, on a swivel. Wow. Yes. I just listened really to cool. somebody who had an out-of-body experience. And All of a sudden, you can see everything. Thing is this 360-degree vision. That I haven't I experienced have. that myself yet. But I haven't either. But that's people just that have. It makes sense. I mean, why not? So how has this changed you having these kinds of experiences that are undeniable? I've I've had experiences where I've spoken to my family and spirit, and I'm like. That was them. I mean, it's undeniable. It's my you know it right away. You know it. You feel and it. It sits. It sits in your heart differently. Sorry. How does that change you? Because you used to be in corporate. Oh God. You used to be in customer service. I mean, you've done that whole thing, and now you said people wouldn't recognize you now. Well, I mean, I've, I'm. I wasn't ever an introvert, but I was really quiet. Yeah. Um, there's no way I'd be speaking about this stuff in public a couple years ago. I'd be too embarrassed. I'd be too afraid. I've dropped a lot of the fear. I mean, once you, oh gosh, you guys, I'm so excited for anyone that's going to go to Yosemite for the first time or, you know, interact with you guys. Like, you open the door and you're like, Todd, and I was like, Carrie, there it was you like, are. It was like, family. boom, and then you too, you yeah. know, big hugs, not, not this, hi, nice to meet you, shaking your hand, because it's natural. It's there's something there that is tangible, from soul to soul connection, mm -hmm. and when you, the first time I saw the ship, I couldn't believe it now you said blah, 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 blah. yeah just kind of completely I was just brain. like I was like in my my, my rationale is no it's a satellite that's a satellite and then it went and I was like oh, okay it's not a satellite because I didn't just see it but I felt it you think does a satellite do this yeah <laughs> but can it do this yeah I mean it's your heart squeeze exactly and then when I had the interaction after that and I asked I asked the the the, the the entities on the ship. I asked them to, you know, for my request, and they did it immediately. Just more than uh, a couple of times it's happened. I said, "Hey, go ahead and take a turn," and they'll turn. You know, they're just different things. You you play with it. It's it's a process. It does, and, and you just you just feel it. So how, yeah, I was saying, how does that feel like it's changed you? Oh gosh, I'm a lot lighter now. Yeah, things don't bother me. Well, you unfortunately, your home was completely flooded through Harvey. Yeah. And still is. Well, not flooded, but we're not. You're back still in not yet. even back in. So mm -hmm. we're a full year post Harvey, and you and your family haven't even been able to get back into their home now because of lots of stuff, stuff. that's happened. Yeah. But you were saying you've handled this so much differently. Oh yeah. Than I, you would have a few years ago. If this would have happened a few years ago, I would have been on the floor in the fetal position, sucking my thumb, in a pool of tears. Just. But now I've I've noticed that you can do things only so much. You can beat your head against the wall, beat your head against the wall, beat your head against the wall, and nothing happens. That's what we were doing for basically a year. But the minute I stopped and said, you know what, I was trying to fix things myself. I'm not a carpenter, I'm not a electrician. Well, obviously I can't do electrical, plumbing, all that. But I mean, I was trying to do some simple carpentry work. And I just kept hitting a brick wall. Things, would, Everything I would take apart would break. And I'd un, un, move another piece of the wall and then that was messed up there. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, every time it's something else. 
But the day that I decided to give my tools back to my friend that I borrowed, I said, I'm not doing I cannot do this. It's out of my wheelhouse. It's out of my depth. I'm not doing this. The day I decided to do that, went to pick up my tool, my friend's tools to give them back to him, and my contractor showed up. He's like, hey, Todd, just want to stop by, see how you're doing. He's like, oh, what happened? And he saw that all the stuff I had screwed up. I tried to do. And everything that was broken, and he's just like, what happened? I was like, man, I can't do this. I was like, I don't know what to do. The quote you gave me, you know, it was, we don't have that much money. We can't, you know, I tried to do it myself, and I can't. He's like, number one, he showed up the day. I didn't. Yeah. He didn't know I was there. I just popped in. Yeah. So he said, look, let's do something. It doesn't have to be a lot. Let's just get you moving forward. He said, I'll let you have a couple of my guys at my cost. Um, we'll let you, uh, you know, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll fix this, this part, fix this part and that part, and then we'll just, we'll, for that, I'll give you this, and the amount of money he quoted was amazingly low. I said, wow. yes, please, please do that. He's like, okay, it's actually he's doing it right now. Yay. Yesterday and today, it'll be done Wednesday, and then we'll just take another step, take another step, take another step, because we were to the point, my mom and I were like, we are going to lose our house. We can't continue to have two residences. Because yeah. you still have to pay on the condo. Guys, if you're I on know. a condo, <laughs> don't let it flood. But uh, Well, a lot of people are in Houston and this. You're yeah. paying a mortgage and you're renting something exactly. else to live in. And you're we, paying if, for repairs. If we don't pay our maintenance fees, they're going to foreclose. Yeah. So it's like, ah, do we walk away? Do we sell it for a very low amount? Or do we try and get it back to where it needs to be? And it's this amount. Yeah. So, but he showed up and that's the first step. And, and they said that, you know, help's going to come from where you least expect it. And it's already happened. Uh, the meditation group that I was a part of was amazing. They, they came together, a friend of mine, they all donated some money that they had to help me, which is amazing. And then one of the girls in the group, it's an international group, so they all did what they could, but one of the girls had a foundation. And she said, well, why don't I contact? I was like, well, that would be amazing. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't think of it, but it wasn't the right time. Yeah, right. So you had to she, learn went to her, she went to her foundation and they gave another big chunk of money that helped my mom and I get to where we are now. That's awesome. So, but yeah, it's all about intention. It's all about feeling, vibration, energy. And when you do the clearing, this little card that James developed is amazing. It's in all of his books. It's in all of his websites. And I've used it since I've been using it. Um, I had that interaction in the store. Should, oh, I, tell that? Should yeah. I tell that now? Yeah. So if you're just joining us, we're speaking with Todd Hosman. He's here in Houston, and he's been up to the East Eddy Ranch a number of times to have all this spiritual awakening and experiences, and it's really just changed the whole energy of your, of how you see being. life. Yeah. yeah. Ener energy of your being for the better. Yeah. I can and feel it. My friends can feel it. It freaks some of them out, unfortunately. But you know that's part of the process too. But you're planting seeds. I mean, yeah. I think that I think that that's I'm, yeah. That's part of it, yeah. And James Gilliland, who runs the ranch, it's his it's his place. He's done this uh, healing negative influences tool that we went through when we opened the show, and you put it into practice. He developed it, but it's not just one thing. It's he brought it together with a lot of different practices and things he yeah. learned. He kind of put it all like the best of the best. He put yeah. it all into this, and this is one thing that just really helps you in the moment. Just dump your dump your negative energy. If anyone's attached to you, a negative entity is attached to you, or something's just not serving you anymore, it helps take it away. So that sounds, away. to me, that sounds scary when you think a negative entity is attached to me. I feel like that, like when you've got something that is just stuck in your car, it you. just will not shift and move. That, I don't know if you would call that a negative energy or negative uh, entity. Yeah. So. But yeah, yeah, it's like not mine. Yeah. You know it's not yours. James says that all the time. He's like, not mine. He does clearing, it's gone. You said, not my monkeys, not my circus? Well, that's a lot of people say that. They say, not my monkey, not my circus. So it's like, whatever you, like, you know how you feel. What if you're so super happy, and all of a sudden you get, just the bottom drops out, and you start crying, and you're like, there's no reason you should be crying. Well, something could be affecting you, or something's mm -hmm. ready to be released, mm -hmm. and the clearing could help. Meditation helps. I mean, whatever tool works best for you. But I... After my first trip to the ranch, I thought this was really cool, and I, I used it for myself. Um, and I, I started to notice a difference over time. Felt lighter, felt happier, felt just unburdened. All the stuff that's there wasn't there anymore. But the thing that made it concrete for me, and I, I didn't tell you guys this, the best part, I was, in the st I was working in a store one day, and um, I'd always used it for myself. Always used it for myself. And I 
had a thought. I was like, well, what about for the people? You know, what about, does it work for other people? I was like, I was sort of questioning that. And the minute I questioned it, this lady walked behind me, didn't see her, felt her, which was kind of strange. But I didn't see her, I felt her. I felt an energy wave move through me and it was cold. And I was like, oh, I was like, what was that? And I looked, the lady crossed the corner and went around the other side. I saw her in another part of the store because I was, I was working with the shelves and putting things out and doing displays and stuff like that. And I saw her in another part of the store and I noticed that she was twitching and talking to herself. So I'm like, okay, maybe this lady's got something going on. You know, could be emotional, could be um, a, brain, a brain thing, a, phys a, a physical thing. And then I saw her a third time. I passed her in the front of the store and we made eye contact. I locked eyes with her and I did what, what, uh, what um, Carrie does all the time. She like sees people and is like, hey, tell me something good. And I'm like, oh, you know, takes them out of their stuff. Well, this took me out because we walked past. I looked at her. I said, hey, how you doing today? And I smiled and she's all blah, 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 in a different language. It wasn't English. It wasn't Spanish. It wasn't Italian. It wasn't anything of this planet that I know of. And I noticed that she was really sweaty and she spoke a different language to me and then she kept going. And that's when it hit me. I was like, she was walking away from me and I was walking this way. We crossed each other and I said, Hey, maybe this will help her. So I reached into my pocket and I didn't have it memorized yet. So I reached in my pocket. I was going to pull out the, the card. I was going to read it. And the moment I did that, you know, when you have a, a grocery cart and it has a bad wheel, then boom, the lady ran her cart into me. She rammed you. She rammed me, running pace, hit me in the foot, or right on the ankle, right on the bone of my ankle. I fell down onto the ground, and I'm sitting there stunned. It's like I didn't get injured or hurt. I felt no pain, but I, something, I felt the impact, the impact yeah. and I was on the ground, and I was like, whoa, what? what? And I looked at my ankle, and I kind of stood up, and I kind of put weight on. I was like, is it okay? Is it broken? Is it? And I felt nothing. I looked at my ankle, not even a scratch on me. And I looked at the lady, and normally I'd be like, you know, blah, blah, you know, whatever, this and that, angry, upset. And I just smiled at her, and I said, lady, watch where you're pushing your cart. And then she immediately went into accusing me of, you hit me in the back of the store. She was yelling at this point. I was just smiling at her, stayed in, stayed in love, stayed in, you know, separate from the, whatever was going on. And it turns out, I asked a friend of mine later, and they said that, if I had had this memorized at that point and even started it, just started the, the, to say the phrases, that's when my, my guides and my help would have come in and helped me. And she would have stopped in her tracks and not even touched me. But because I was in my heart and I believe trying to help the entity or whatever was connected to her, help her clear that, that I was given protection. Otherwise, you know, they would, I would have had a broken ankle or, mm -hmm. you know, who knows you. what else. But if I had started, she would have stopped dead interaction, and none of that would have even happened. So that's when I was like, okay, maybe I should memorize this thing. <laughs> so, but you did it, though. You, you, you read, read it, and she... As she left, yeah. Oh, yes, as she left, the manager took her off, and uh, I was just standing there letting her freak. She was freaking out, accusing me of all kinds of stuff that I didn't do. And I was like, lady, I didn't do that. And the manager came over and said, let me take care of this. And he took her over there, you know, checked her out, and then escorted her to the um, parking lot. But I ran around the other side of the checkout line and read it really quick and then <laughs> then went back to my back to my job and uh then i didn't realize distance doesn't matter with this so the amazing thing is you can have your intention set on helping someone on the other side of the world mm -hmm. it can be a group of people it could be a family member it could be someone that's passed on yeah it heal. doesn't matter that's the great thing it's universal and it doesn't matter what religion it says jesus it could be buddha it could be babaji it could be muhammad it could be mary who isn't Catholic, by the way. James talks about it all the time. She's an entity. She's a galactic presence, not just what the Catholic Church has turned her, tried to turn her into, unfortunately. We all have her. I mean, she's, yeah. I mean, yeah, she's, she's the divine. Mother. Oh, she she she's, a, she's well, amazing. Okay, so so you send her with love. Which is right. Yeah. 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 And she... And she... I didn't... I, did, I don't know, because I went back to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure instantly she felt different. She, she had to. The entity that was there is gone. If she was ready for it to be gone that's the thing you can help people but if they're not ready to let go yeah. they're going to invite that entity back in or they're going to reattach yeah. or they're going to whatever contract they think they have to have with them that, that that you can null and void the contract with this as well 
if they want to redo it again or they're not ready to, they unfortunately can bring stuff back in that was there. Well, it has to be theirs. Their I choice. mean, it's, it's their lesson. But you're and giving so, them the opportunity to change. Right. The you're opening that door and saying, "You want to go?" Well, and that's, that's something cute. you do now, as you you just became certified for your Reiki energy and yeah. home clearings and kind of working with people's energy. That's something you're stepping into. Yeah, one of the ladies, unfortunately, at our complex, she was an old lady, older lady, and her family doesn't live here. She lives by herself. And my mom and I oh, had to have, be rescued by a big truck because we were once the water got up into our house, it was at ankle level, and then everyone here at Houston knows they messed up by opening the levees or whatever. Yeah. Then it went up to four feet really quickly, yeah. really quickly. So we were running out of the house with nothing but what we had on our... You know, I grabbed the chihuahua, grabbed a little sweet pea. My mom was behind me. We jumped in her truck, and they took us, you know, out of our place. But she, unfortunately, passed away. And Wait, who? One of the ladies that lived there, uh, an, old, an elderly lady. During the flood? During the flood, she died. She drowned. She didn't get out. Oh, no. And I didn't find out till later. I went back several weeks, and they were talking about it. And I said, I was like, oh, hey, maybe this will apply. And I asked the lady, because the lady that worked there was clairvoyant. She's like, I go by that lady's apartment. I feel sad. I feel depressed. I feel angry. I feel confused. Yeah, She's I'm like, alone. and I'm like, you know what? That entity, they're trapped there. Mm -hmm. And another thing that this helps do is helps people cross over. It's amazing. And so I said, I said, hey, what if I went by? It was like, I was like, what's the apartment number? And she's like 125. And I told her my story. And she's like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's so true. I had an entity that was in my house, you know, years ago. And I see it. So I went to the house. I walked around. I cleared the outside. I cleared the inside. I said a prayer, I said the clearing, I asked her higher self, ask permission first. You always have to ask permission first. Mm -hmm. I said if it's in her highest good for my higher self to help hers or bring in whoever we need to bring in to help her move on or explain what happened because she was confused. I didn't feel any of these emotions, by the way. The lady did. Yeah. She told me what was going on and I said, well, let me go try and clear because I know, I know that I have that ability after learning about this and other things that I do as well. I said, let me go clear the house. So I did that and then I left. And then later, I went back a couple days later, and she's like, Todd, Todd, what did you do? Oh, my God. She's gone. She's like, I went back by the apartment. There's nothing. It feels regular and normal. I was like, I was like, I gave her a card. I said, this is what I did, and I explained it to her. So she has the card. Now I said, feel free to take a picture, send that to anybody that you want. That's really cool. Because like, I've been given permission by James to share it far and wide, and that's what I do. I come across people all the time. And if I make a connection or they're talking about something spiritual, I'm like, hey, Guess what? Check this out. Well, it's really just a, 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 an intention of love, inclusion and love, right? That seems like it's... It's amazing. I mean, it's so... And it's really putting it into action, too, though. It's not Well, just... you have to, yeah. I mean, but it's second nature to me now. Before, yeah, yeah I would never... Get, I mean, I literally, if I see an opening, I will jump in now and say, hey, have you heard about this? But I do it now with questions. I don't, yeah. you know, try and just ram it. Hey, I've had this and this and this and this, and you can do it, too. They're like... Ah! I ask them questions like, "Well, what do you think about this?" What do you think? Then, if they're open, I'll tell them about that. I'll share the I'll share the story with them. I'll give them a card, or I'll say, "Hey, take a picture." Yeah. Send it to whoever. I mean, there was a person at my mom's nursing home recently where she was. The lady next to her had night terrors, really bad night terrors. She'd scream out for help all night long. Help me! Help me! Just my mom would hear her through the wall. So my mom told me this was going on, and I was driving on the freeway, and I was like, "Okay, mom, hold on." So I did the clearing while I was driving. And, you know, because by that time, I've got it second nature to me. I'm like, you know, if this person, if we can help them, let's help them. If they're acceptable to it, if they're open to it, let's clear this energy out. Let's help this lady. And that night, my mom said she didn't hear anything from that lady um, for several nights. But a week later, she did start hearing stuff again. So it, it, it's not, I mean, it's not like... One time, one time thing. It's a repeated problem. Could be, or, you know... Your body, it's, yeah. it's, it's whatever... But the good thing is you're doing something. You're doing right, something. right. You're helping lift it. You're trying. You're doing. It's intention. It's all intention, vibration. It's, yeah. I've heard that many, many times. Okay, so I have a question for you. So, shifting gears a bit. Now, you are very connected with your galactic family. Yes. So, um, so I, I explain some of that. So, this is that. the galactic medicine wheel at East City. There's many different places. You guys can check out on the, on the website. The galactic, the galactic medicine wheel affected me in such a profound way. I had no idea. Like I said, I wanted to see a ship. I wanted to go see a UFO. 
Well, part of the weekend that I was there, there's many different speakers and different things, and there's a lot of stuff to explore on the SETI property, different things. This is the one that profoundly affected me, next to Skywatch. So this looks like a labyrinth that you you're walk, a meditative walk through? There's different, uh, there's different, you walk through it, um, you start on the outside, you go to the first layer, you walk all the way around it, and then you go into the second layer, which is here, and you go around that, and then in the middle there's the galactic sun, the galactic central sun, if you think of the whole galaxy and universe. The central sun's in the middle, that's the really bright light. And then you've got all the other stuff in the Milky Way, and then we're way down, um, if you think of a clock face, we're way down around about 7 o'clock. That's where we are okay. with the Milky Way. So they've got different portals. They've got Arcturian, Andromedan, Syrian. Um, they've got a one for Bigfoot and Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. They've got a portal or a pod, whatever you want to call it, an area for the Ascended Masters. Um, they've got one for the elementals, and there's one more that I don't remember right now, but there's many in there. And as you walk through each one, you feel with your senses. That's a great way to train yourself to feel. Oh, it was. Hey, Lucy, I'm home. Yeah, it, I was like, I was like, okay, yeah, this will be cool. You know, I'll walk through the stuff, and you know, I'll get a little twitch or something or a feeling maybe. No, 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 no. When I went into I have Arcturian connections, I have Pleiadian, but I didn't feel anything that day in those pods. Mainly what I felt was my Andromedan connection and my Orion connection. Because I went through the transpersonal release session that James does, and when he does that, he clears out four of the past lives, on-world or off-world, that are affecting this one. And it's like taking rocks out of a river. If you think of a river being dammed up, he goes and they take the rocks out, and then the water can flow and the energy can flow and everything else. Mm -hmm. So, I have my, my aura replaced with my original aura, my Andromedan aura, and uh, the Transpost Release Session helped me realize I had Andromedan, Pleiadian, and Orion lifetimes and connections as well, star family connections. When I went into the Andromedan area of the Galactic Medicine Wheel, I felt on a scale of 1 to 10, it was like a 12. It was so powerful. I started to cry, just weeping, just... <laughs> Like the really, really strong wow. crying and can just because, but it wasn't negative. It was love. I felt love, and my I felt it in my heart chakra, and I kind of started swaying up in my shoulders, up higher. And I didn't know about the chakras at that point. I didn't even know what a chakra was, but I felt it. That's what was cool, key That's to cool. me. Should, I felt I, it, and just, I felt it in that chakra. I'm just going to see a UFO, and you have this kind of experience. yeah, yeah. It's just a, that's just what gets you there. Talk yeah. about like compounding. And then I went to the Orion pod, and their chakra is tied to more uh, down by your uh, heart, mm -hmm. sacral, sort of lower. That's your not sacral, root. your root, your sacral, maybe sacral, your root. right? But lower down, like maybe your root. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't know exactly. But I did the hula, but like before I was doing the hula up high. Then down there, I was doing the hula like on my waist, and I was like, why am I moving like this? And they're like, it's, it's fine. It's just you're feeling the energy. And I didn't find out until months later that they were tied to those chakras. And that's why I was moving. Andromeda is up here, chakra up for the Orions down there, and I was feeling it intuitively. Wow. Didn't know what I was doing, but I just started swinging. I was like, why am I doing this? Let's... They're like, it's fine, just go with it. Yeah. So I did. And I found out later that it was Andromeda and um, Orion. But since then, I've had other wonderful, wonderful experiences in the other ones. And I can't wait to go back now and get into the one, the one with the uh, Sasquatch and Yeti and Bigfoot. Do you have another trip planned? Oh, I'd, I'd love to go back this year, but I may be too um, tied, up in the house. tied up with the house and stuff. But I'll, I, I, and it's only open during the I was going to say, and it's right? about to May, close, right? October, November. It's open, I think it closes September, October, depends on the weather. Oh, yeah. Whenever it starts snowing, they can't yeah. keep it open because there's so much snow up there yeah. that it opens. And it opens, I begin, yeah, it's like April, May through. Yeah. Depends on the, the yeah. seasons, yeah. But I would always go to the main conference. First year, I went to the small conference right after the 4th of July. Didn't feel comfortable going to that big one yet because I was just kind of putting my toe in the water. But that first trip to SETI, seeing the ships, finding my star connections. I even had, I even had an out-of-body experience, but I don't remember what it was because they didn't want me to remember yet. They just wanted a confirmation to show me that it was going on. You're traveling, yeah. That I traveled and that I didn't remember what happened but I do remember I woke up with huge Charlie horse cramps underneath both my calves. Just think of all your muscles being shoved up underneath your knee. I mean, you've oh, had wow. calf, you've had mm -hmm. calf cramps before. 
but I was drinking water the entire time. No reason I should have had any Ate kind a banana. of cranking, I mean... eating bananas, eating <laughs> granola, whatever. All the right stuff for being, even at elevation, there's no reason I should have had a cramp. I was drinking water all day long. Right. Never had a cramp two or three days. Nothing. It was the third night I, I think I was there. A lot of people get all kinds of muscle paralysis after they actually travel. It's yep, they'll come back in their body and they can't move yet because they're not fully back. So it does affect your body. But they, they, they gave me that so I would remember it. That it happened. Oh. That it happened. And then I did investigative stuff later. All this stuff that happened, it's you process it for months, and it just leads you to the next thing. It leads you to the next question, the next question, the next person, the next thing. And now, after three years, I'm here with you guys talking about all this on this show. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Isn't that interesting? It is. I have a question for you. You could wiggle your nose. What would next year bring you? Oh Where will gosh. you be next year, this time? Not in control, but in a I know, where, I know, I know where I've I've been given like little nudges, and the first time I visited Eseti, James did his little thing that he does where he'll, you know, pop around in and out of dimensions. He can walk around Eseti and no one can see him because he's in a different, higher level of vibration and dimension. Because I was eating breakfast the second day by myself in the sanctuary in the middle of this big building. The door is like twenty yards away. No other way to get in. I'm sitting there eating, all of a sudden I don't hear the door open, I don't hear people walking on the wood floor like you would on a deck or whatever. And all of a sudden James appears to my right and he's like, hey, how's it going? I was like, oh, he startled me because... Where did you come from? And he does that all the time. He's like running around and he'll pop in, he'll pop That's out. That's a fun superpower. Yeah, it's really cool, but I got to witness it firsthand and, and he, would, he asked me some really cool questions while I was eating breakfast. And then I realized months later that I wasn't talking to James. An aspect of him? I was either talking to another aspect of him. He, he could have been channeling one of my higher selves to give mm -hmm. me a message. Mm -hmm. Because the questions he asked me led me to my next. Mm -hmm. I was eating breakfast going, man, this place is really cool. I wonder when I'm going to come back. Oh, that's what he did. He popped in and said, hey, you might want to check out Laura Eisenhower's thing coming so up. wonderful. I love Laura Eisenhower. And I was like, okay, that's the next trip. That's the next time I'll be back. And he, then he asked me a bunch of trips. He, he wanted me to, he taught me about limitation. I mean, it was an amazing experience. And then all of a sudden, he's like, all right, man, have a great day. I'll see you later. That was your tea too. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't walk out of the room. Okay, the, the door didn't open. The door didn't close. And he was gone. Got and other people, <laughs> other people have passed him, too. Like, Peter, Peter's had an experience with him, too, where he passed him wearing clothes. And then he saw James later wearing different clothes. And James was like, oh, that was a different aspect of me. But that's amazing. Like, almost like You know when location. you want to be in two or three places? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Black did. Where next year? Next year, yeah. So... I will have probably one, oh. if not several books, written by that time. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. Channeled through my higher self called Omar, who's my aspect, my line being aspect from the uh, Syrian star yeah, system. Related to Bacall? Mm, Omar Bacall? That sounds like a movie. Bacall is, Bacall and Kaha are the main guardians. Of the ranch? Of the planet. Oh. Of many 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 solar systems i believe if you if she's you, the line being right if you look back on the on the pyramids mm -hmm. they have all the the demands the people with the bodies of a human and the head of a lion there's bacall i know i think it's actually i think it's kaha that's there i don't think there's bacall i think it's mainly her the, the feminine aspect is on the pyramids but there's evidence of them they're the protectors they're the um guardians of universal law so in, in, the, in the Eastern religions, they're known as the Nasharinga. Really? And they would protect villages from bandits. They'd come in and they'd, they'd come in on their horses and all of a sudden they'd, you couldn't see them because they wouldn't appear physically, but they'd scratch, rip their clothes off, and they'd run away with scratches all over their bodies and their shredded clothing. God, I know this and how Because they did the, uh, Ashley may have talked about it, or James, James talks about it all the time. That's where I heard it from, where I learned it from. Okay, so how does that relate to you? I, Omar is an aspect of that, but it's not Bacall. Bacall's higher up on the chain, I guess you'd say. Bacall is me in a different dimension, mm -hmm. who's already ascended, who's now giving back information to me to bring into this dimension, to bring in grounded here, the energy, the information, so that our consciousnesses all can learn from it. Each one of us has a piece of the puzzle, so that's my part. Yeah. My connection with, his name is Omar. I have a, I, I, I know a person that, um, she said that, the call showed up and she said her the dogs and the cats went nuts 
And physically, she showed up and. Ka or Bacall? It was Bacall. Okay. And she said that it, it was it was. She had been. Oh, how do I say it? She was not. A, she'd been smoking. And so she's like, I can't right now. I can't, I can't, I can't. You got to come back. And she did. She left and she came back. A friend of mine, a friend of mine that uh, she helped me with some angel readings after we worked together. She actually, no, she, yeah, she actually helped me. Her name's Jessica. She helped me open a portal from the, during a meditation with her. That's the one that was told to contact me to give me a reading. Mm -hmm. Her archangels told her, hey, go give this guy a reading. He needs some help moving energy around. He needs some messages. We need to tell him some stuff. And she said it's never happened. You know, she does readings for people, but she's never said, said hey, go call this person. Go call this person and do something with them. So together we worked, together we opened the portal. I'd opened a portal during my meditation group to the seventh dimension with Bacall in the Lionsgate, 8 8 yeah, 17. Yeah. 8 8 17, last year. Not this year, but last year, last August. 8 8 8. And that was when the connection was made, but she physically, or in meditation, we went there together. And Metatron Thoth showed up to open the portal, to protect the portal that was opened. From the we went from the third to the fifth, and then the fifth dimension. I couldn't see anything, but I was participating. I couldn't, but she could see all of it. She said it was kind of like that movie, uh, "What Dreams May Come." Mm -hmm. Remember I the painting? Mm -hmm. It's yeah, like we jumped in the paint. I imagined us jumping in the painting and walking up that hill to the tree, and all the colors were around us. And then Omar was there as a cat, a black feline cat he was there and he was running around he came up he jumped in my arms and i gave him a hug and he jumped down went through the portal she went through the portal and i went through the portal from the fifth and metatron or thoth whichever entity thoth is the one with the human body on the pyramids with the crane head and metatron is a different aspect of him he was protecting the portal holding up us for so we went from the fifth to the seventh and she said once we got to the seventh she couldn't even see all she could see was omar standing there my higher aspect of me Human form, lion head, in a robe, and she said all it was all light because the seventh dimension is a holographic universe and it's full of light. And she saw him and he was speaking to her, but I couldn't hear any of it. I was just kind of there. And she's like, "Okay, Todd, you're going to work with Omar. He's going to bring forward information." Um, she said, "You're going to be writing books with him, not a book, but books." I'm like, "Oh, that's cool. I've never even written one, but I'll be reading several." I was like, "All right, okay." It's like I'm open, awesome. so I'm, now I'm I'm consciously working now to make a connection with Omar, to where I can feel when he's giving me information, but I don't hear anything and I don't have. It'll come. Yep, it's on its way. It's on its how way do you working. how do you how do you work on that particular? I mean, you how just do you work keep on tuning in? Meditation. Remember when Abraham hit, I know, I know. There's something. The there's something going on. We've we got the same thing. We got the same thing. And talking. I was saying when Esther was started channeling yeah. Abraham, all, it's slowly. It's not. Well, with your uh, with your automatic writing, yeah. right? When did you start with a couple of words and then it just opened up? Or no, how I just ask a question. Hi, how are you guys today? Guess what happened? What does this mean? And then it starts. Because I've been I've been guided to work with automatic writing, but the main thing is that he told me to. <laughs> Basically, sit down and shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the hard part. Be still. Be still. And I have a difficult time stopping. I'm just all over the place. And I, I say, be still and listen. Uh, I mean, you, you do listen. I want to say hi, hi. Terry, to our friends who are joining us. Sue is saying, Joy Ride to East Eddie in 2019. Yeah, question mark, heck question yeah. Mark, question mark, question mark. Heck yeah, that would be amazing. Crew up. Uh, hi, Terry. What's Skywatch in 2019? Uh, Sherry. Hi, Denise. Denise is on. Brenda. There's Michelle. She had a great healing experience with a droop during dream time. Wow, that's Look forward fun. forward to more experiences in the awake stage. Me too. I have a lot of cool dream time. Ask for it. Ask, Ask for, for conscious. It. Ask conscious for consciousness. More. They'll they Marcy's will. Marcy's on. Hi, Marcy. They will. And Daryl. Hi, Daryl. And Sarah. Sarah. David Cazares. Hi, David. Oh, this is so cool. Denise is saying it is fascinating, isn't it? It's amazing. I mean, the first trip blew my mind, and the second every trip I got something different. But you can do your own sky watch. You really can. And it, it is just truly finding an open space where you, I mean, I, I think it's better when you can see more of the sky and tuning in. And especially if you raise your vibration and you go in with that intent, like the childlike wonder and that anticipation. Mm -hmm. You go into your heart. Go and play yeah. with it. Yeah. Go into your and heart. And ESETI's website is E-C-E-T-I dot org. And that stands again for the extra... Enlightened contact with extraterrestrial intelligence. Very good. That's a mouthful. I had to write it down. 
And then if you want to get in touch with this guy here, Todd, Todd Hausman, he's um, just a wealth of information, kind of stepping into this world, and you're doing, like I said, Reiki, energy healing. I have a, I'm a level two Reiki, Reiki practitioner, but whatever we're going to be working with energy-wise, energy I don't know what to call it yet. It's like, I like what Carrie said. She said that it was more energy work. Mm -hmm. But my, whatever I'm doing with Reiki is allowing many other things to come through. It's not just Reiki, yeah. it's energy work, but there's a lot of things I'm, that I'm gonna be stepping into in the next few years. So, one of one of the, Michaela, she told me seven years, she's like, in seven years you're gonna freak out. She's like, you're not gonna believe it's gonna take about seven years. So I'm like, no, tomorrow, but tomorrow, I'm, right? it doesn't work that way, folks. So I wish wanna, it did. If you wanna get a hold of Todd, it's T-O-D, one D underscore Hossman, H-A-S-S-M-A-N-N at hotmail.com. So you said it was okay to put your email on. Yeah, there. that's fine. Right now, that's all I have. I don't have a website yet. I don't have. It's just I'm starting with. This is my You're coming out party. Yay! Here with we go. It's so good. With the metaphysical um, mom. Kind of so. a family here. We've all had our own coming out. Like, oh my gosh, I'm really saying this out loud. People are really going to hear me. It's recorded. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that hasn't hit me yet. I'm just kind of staying in the moment at this point. So I'm not. It's all right. I hope it was fun. I no, hope this was amazing. This well, is amazing. Well, this is the first. And, and everybody's of the same. And you're in our backyard. So, I mean, it, it is. You have to come on and come play with us. Tiffany's going to be my neighbor soon. If we stay there, we, we're not yeah, sure. We're be, that's awesome. We'll be doing Skywatch. I know it, I'm, and I'll be teaching. I have a feeling I'll be teaching Eddie Seti at some point, or at uh, least lecturing. But you know, writing some books. I, I, I could write my book right now about he, just about Eddie Seti. That's you know what I wonder? I wonder if we can. I mean, it's sort of what we did right now. But I'm wondering if 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 somehow James, if we could figure out how to bring Isetti here, like bring some of the practices here. I know that they do Isetti on the road when the when the ranch closes the road down. Shows, yeah. Well they've got right now they have Isetti Australia and Isetti uh J Seti, a big group in Japan. Oh yeah yeah. And they've they've had several trips to the ranch from Japan. So I mean my intention is to bring everything that I've learned, this is step one, phase one, whatever you want to call it, of being the ambassador that I am and being stepping into my gifts and sharing it with people because I can't do it in a vacuum. I can only help, you know, like help myself as much as I can, but it takes other people. And I believe we each have a piece of the puzzle. And That's this right. is the first step. We could we could eventually have East City Houston. You so know, I think that would know. be amazing. You never know, but it's all about you sharing. Uh, M-U-F-O-N, MUFON group. Mm -hmm. But I think they're more, I think they're more fact-based, um, scientific, scientific yeah. proof base. I, I don't know much about MUFON. I know what it is, but I don't know much about I it. I joined, but I have never been able to go because I'm curious. But then I don't know that I necessarily want to share all my like because it's not what I experience is not provable. It's just what my. That's the thing about is. that's the thing about enlightenment and and, and disclosure so and experience. Face, but it's kind of coming yep. together, you know. But the cool thing is together. though. But when you have this evidence, when you have yeah. videos of. Something's out. Something, some kind of energy is being recorded. Something our eye can't see, but our, our electronic equipment can yeah. now see a different frequency. God, it's it's, it's like great. something's going on. It's kind of undeniable. Oh yeah, I and mean you can feel it. And the cool thing is too, James has the once you're out there, Skywatch. You can look through the. Uh, what's, called? what's it called? Binoculars. Binoculars. Night vision, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> night vision, and he has two different types. You can see it. And when you look through night vision for the first time, what I do whenever I'm doing out there in Skywatch Field and there's new people, I grab the I grab it as soon as I can and I like share it with everybody. I was like, hey, have you ever seen night vision? Like, oh no, 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 here, check this out. Like <gasps> Robert oh my King. God. He has military grade night vision. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's here in Houston. There you go. So oh by the way, I I, I was it was funny, I was watching us and I've been looking this way. We have this big wall size Say the word mirror. Thank you on that wall, and so I—that's what I've been watching. I've been watching him there. I'm not ignoring him, like tuning him out, looking this <laughs> way. You know, I've been watching you guys that yeah, way. It's my first time to look at cameras, so I don't know the camera mirror. You guys, I'm just—I'm uh, doing, yeah. doing all three. That's it's all right. It's all right. Deal. Well, guys, this has been so much fun. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's been it's been looking forward to do this for a long time. The first show I saw you guys I, was the Stevens and Pruitt one. Oh yeah, that was our and first video. That was really yeah. That's the first one I saw. I laughed my butt off, and then I started crying. I was like, what? I was like, oh, okay. We're supposed to do something. You do cry happen. when you do, don't you? That's part of my. That's part of what I have. I know I'm don't having you? experience. I'll get goosebumps, but really intense goosebumps. I'll feel my higher self. I can feel coming through here. 
And then I have something localized here that I'm not sure who that is yet. Mm -hmm. I'm still discovering that. And then whenever I cry around something, I know it's important. It's because I'll be like, oh, da, 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 da. like, oh, <laughs> whoa, okay, what's going on? What just happened? Okay, it was something that happened in the last few seconds, or if I watch a video. But I love that you have that confidence or that what to just let it the emotions be there. So many it's men, bad. you are you're balanced. You are very masculine. You're divine. Balance, because a lot of men will not no. show masculine. emotions that easily. Well, we've been programmed out of it. Yeah, that's true. That's a whole other to topic. show weakness. To show they kill you. Yeah. Back in the medieval times and they throw you off. Gladiator times. They, look at them. They'd spear you, they'd crucify. I've been crucified, unfortunately, in one of my previous lives. Ooh. I worked with a friend of mine. I was, I was, my name was David. I was crucified, but I was tortured first, and then I was crucified. So, I mean, she, I did a work with her. Her name's Shannon, and we worked together. Uh, I worked with her for a few things, and she helped me clear some three past lives out. She helped me clear. Wow. And again, something happened that didn't happen with any of her other people. Michael came in and said, hey, stop. This is enough for today. And I was like, That's I don't cool. feel anything. She's like, no, no, when he, uh, yeah. he's never said this before, so we're stopping. Yeah. We're stop, we stop, we gotta stop. So it's like each person I interact with, it's amazing. Things happen. It's me and oh, it's them together. You know, it's know, not they, just me. It's things, they see things that they haven't seen before and I have things that I haven't felt before. It's amazing. You know what they just showed me? I'm sorry, I had to get my finger up so no, no, I would yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Please. The reason, it's sort of, whether it's negative or, I mean, inner energetically so like, when you start pulling those pieces out you don't want the framework to kind of kind of sag it's like the so, okay, well, <laughs> exactly and so right, we need right, to keep yeah. some of you know we'll come in and excavate because the new will form over those holes yeah they're not holes but we're so limited do you see it do you yeah. see what i'm saying no no i completely understand that because yes, i was actually in a session with a friend and i felt like i felt them pull something out from the side and i felt it come out and like a rubber band, the tension was there. Mm -hmm. And then it like, when it released, I felt it release. And I was like, whoa. What was that? That's what everyone's talking about. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't felt it until then. Yeah, but if you're not energetically sensitive, this sounds like, like a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch when of you're hardwash. feeling it, you feel it. It's, it's tangible, it's, it's tangible, tangible, but not from an evidence, from evidence Evidentiary. standpoint, you can't say. But look, you can't weigh love, you can't weigh hate, right. but they exist. We all know that to some extent these energies exist and some people are just more finely tuned to feel them and be able to and work it happened, with them. And it happened over time. I mean, I went in, I went in just a hunk of soul in, hunk a, of in, a, in, a, in, a, in a body and I wanted to see a ship and then I, had, I was introduced, James introduces you to all the dimensional star families he brings in, which we'll do after this. I'll, I'll yeah, no, we're, we're going to have stuff that we need to do. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. He brings in all the higher dimensional and you feel the energy. And it's different for each star family, for the Pleiadians, for the, for the Andromedans, for the Syrians, for the Arcturians. And I apologize if I'm leaving some groups out. But these oh, are the ones I've interacted with. Mm -hmm. And you feel the difference. Mary comes in and you want to dance. Oh, you smell know. roses. Mm -hmm. You feel a certain way. Everyone gets something different. And we're all on the journey together. We're all at different paths, different. It's just some of us are further down the path and it'll connect later with someone else. Mm -hmm. And then like it, for me to think that I would be on this show three years ago, I didn't even know who you were. Right. I hadn't come across you. And it's like now I'm sitting in your house with you guys and this is just an amazing oh. honor and experience. It's, it's, yeah. it's cool. Oh, made me cry. I can't wait till, uh, we do our first sky watch and we just we go from there. So. Oh, I know. I will record it too. But next so. year, I, I have books, books. I'll be helping a lot of different people. We're going to be doing meditations. It's going to be cool. Because you you need to have your own experience of it. You know, you can take other people's words. I mean, James has often said that I'm not your guru. Don't. I'm not. I'm just here to give you an opportunity to have this experience. Do not look up to other people. No. Just don't give your look, power away. Look at them in any way. Look Wait, at them and, and read the book. Send it on. I mean, oh, yeah. These are down. the four books. Can I show them real quick? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are James's four books that he has. Reunion with Source, the story basically of Ezekiel, the Oversoul. Reunion with Ezekiel. Source. Ezekiel and uh, Cassia, I think, of the feminine aspect. Ezekiel's from the Bible. Ezekiel formed with the feminine aspect to become Kazekiel, and that's the Oversoul's East City Ranch. You go to you the next one. Next. That book was very hard to get through. 
I fell asleep so many times I got knocked out because my consciousness was, I'd read a few, I'm, I'm not kidding, two, three pages, yeah. asleep. It's like take a bite and chew, you have two for a yeah. couple days on that. It took yeah. me so long, this is going to be a little longer, it's more stories. Becoming God, two. James's, James's life experience, different things that happened to him. This one too, Ultimate Soul Journey. He wrote these books in the 80s. Some of these books were from the 80s, I believe. Ultimate and then this Soul is what's going on right now. Anunnaki Return, one. Star Nations, and the Days to Come. Anunnaki Return, Star Nations, and the Days to Come. By James. That's what's Beautiful going on. Painting on the front. Too. That's what's going on right now. I can't remember her name. That is, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I have a, um. He said he met her. He met her, and she looked pretty, exactly like Car uh, Cameron, like Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz, and he yeah. fell in love instantly. Oh, yeah, with the blue she eyes. She does look like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is she Anunnaki? Yes. Well, she has lineage, I'm sure, tied yeah. to it. Pleiadian. But I got all those four books my first trip. I had my transpersonal release session. I had my connection with Andromeda and Orion. That's I read the books when I got home. I jumped in, you it's guys. I was like, fourth depressive admission, huh? Oh my God. I talk about biting off more than you can chew. Yeah, I, I, just, just, I was like, where's the abyss? I want to jump into Fire it. Fire hose the seedlings. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, but it, it took a while, you know, and it took years. But now I'm here and, and it's going to get faster and it's, it's going to accelerate. We're all going to come together. We're all going to start dropping stuff a lot quicker than we used to. It's going to go full force forward because I'm sure y'all felt the energy coming in the last yeah. couple of months in this year. Seriously? I mean, there's days Seriously? where I can't get out of bed. I have to sleep. I sleep for three days. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do anything. I'm just like most, it's like a force or a magnet holding me down. But then after that, I'm like, bing. Yeah. You know, like, dung, 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 bouncing what? all over. So it's, but if you ground, if you clear, gosh, this is the, this affected me the most, the clearing. But if you just if you just clear, and that's all you do, it's going to be amazing. Well, the stuff comes up and clear it off. Comes up and clear it off. I I, I think that's really true. Well, okay, we'll, we we're can talk for days. Soon. Yeah, we got to stop somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, guys, next week. Okay, so this weekend, Tiff and I are going to Sedona with Allison Co. and uh, Mitch will be there, and oh, oh, I can't say her name. Lauren Hansen will be there. And Dan from K two D four will be there. Or five will yep. be there. I'm sorry. Tolex coming to you. Tolex. It's Tolex deal. Oh, it's Tolex show. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow. It's the Ascension like trans. The, the, the Ascension. I should know that. What is it? Transformational shift. Oh yeah, that one. I'm just going along for the ride. But we're looking forward to doing a sky watch, and we're looking forward to doing some really cool stuff together. So we'll have to tell you all about that next week. And we may do some filming there. We stay might. Tuned. I think we should take oh, that. Yeah, you should. Mm -hmm. Just basic stuff, you know. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, we'd be interested to hear your stories. And some of you guys have been reaching out to us to, to work with us. And we so appreciate you. Like, you know, we're honored that you would even say yes. So we're slowly kind of getting back to everybody. And uh, we're looking forward to recording those shows too. So Yes. Well, we don't take that lightly. And, and we want to figure take out how time. to best represent you. And, and do and it well. Do it well. Exactly. So anyway, well, guys, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Really. Thank you. This has been Pleasure such a to meet you. blessing. I'm he brought so chocolates nice. and all kinds of goodies. I've been eating two days. So, <laughs> bye, guys. Bye, guys. See you later. See ya. Thank you so much. Yay.